Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, it's been a little while since I had a chance to film, been really busy or occupied. I am rocking the Gonzaga gear. These are the Gonzaga Bulldogs from Eastern Washington. Uh, they are a team that I have rooted for since my youth, the only college basketball team I've ever cheered for. They are currently undefeated going into the tournament. They won their first round. Their second round game is tomorrow, so I'm rocking their, their gear to cheer them on. The shirt came from their Elite Eight appearance, uh, which was two years ago, and I went to the game here in Anaheim and got the shirt. And so, uh, yeah, go Zags. And if you guys want to watch the tournament and check them out, maybe you're looking for a team that you could be a fan of, I'll leave you a little article down in the description that is why you should be rooting for Gonzaga. They've never won a title. This would be their first one if they could hopefully get it. I'm so scared of a lot of the teams in the tournaments. It's going to be difficult to win six in a row. We, uh, we see how, how it goes, I guess. Uh, this problem was done by request by YouTube username Jolly. And so uh, they asked for me back in January, but again, I didn't realize I had had the request, so I'm just getting to a lot of these now. There's a few other videos I want to film, but again, I haven't had time, so I'm trying to get to these ones. Um, it's from the 2016 ANC 10A Problem 24. It was also the 12A Problem 21. One last note, I have transferred my webcam and audio to my desktop computer, hoping that the sound and video will match. I've got a much upgraded uh, CPU and a much upgraded GPU in this other laptop or a desktop. And so I'm hoping that all of those issues from before are a thing of the past going forward. Let's get into this problem. Uh, a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle of radius 200 root 2. Three of the sides of this quadrilateral have length 200. What is the length of its fourth side? Okay, so this is the method that I use to solve it. There are about 12 different solutions on the AOPS forums. Feel free to check those out. There might even be superior ones to this one. This is just what I did to solve it, so I'm sharing it with you. First thing is, when it says it's inscribed in a circle, think uh, inscribed quadrilaterals, and my very first thought is, how can I use Ptolemy's theorem? It's one of the things that you can use. So uh, let's try and create that situation. I'll try and draw it from a head-on view. I'm gonna block the camera for a second. I hope that's big enough. I don't know. Maybe I should go a little bit bigger, actually. We should probably go bigger so that you can see what's going on. Probably need to go a little bit bigger than that. Okay, probably not so circular, but hey, it's a freehand drawing, right? It's, it's all good here. So first off, uh, 200 root 2 is the radius, and 200 are these side lengths. That's bigger by a factor of about 1.4. So uh, we know that we're not going to be, if this is the center and I want to put them down here, it's probably going to be about right here maybe. You will come down here, try to make three equal lengths. And one more, let's try and do it. Okay, something like that. And this one here should be parallel to this one down here. So these are going to be the 200, and these are going to be 200 and 200, and then you're going to have this one connecting like this, and that will be 200 root 2 as a radius, and we'll come here, and you will come here, and you will come over here. Okay, so it's not fun to have to create drawings during the test, but you know what? I get over it. Yeah, you got to do it a lot of the time. They don't give you a drawing in particular so that you have to re you're required to create your own. All right, so how are we going to do this? Um, here's what I did first. I thought, well, all of these triangles are congruent. I wondered what the altitude of this one was. And so I looked at that one triangle. It is isosceles, and I knew that I could find it because when you drop the altitude of an isosceles triangle, it creates two congruent triangles. So if this is 200 root 2, um, I then actually thought of a similar triangle, which would be 1 and 2 root 2, and then uh, did Pythagorean on this one. Since that squares to 8, 8 minus 1 equals 7. 
this altitude would be root seven. And if I transfer it back to this one, this would be a hundred root seven. Um, this angle down here, I called it theta. That would be this angle right here. And now I thought, well, I don't know, 100 root 7, nothing's really great about that. There's no nice trig ratios for it. So the next thing I did think of, though, the tangent of theta is root 7. That's opposite over adjacent. Maybe that'll come in useful later. It actually did for me. So what's next? Um, we're trying to find the length Right? If I give this some names like A, B, C, D, we're looking for the length of A, D, right? We know all these sides are 200. Um, the next thing was, well, let's try and target Ptolemy's theorem. Like we said, Ptolemy's theorem, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, right? Uh, it basically says that the sum of the products of opposite sides, so for us, that would be 200 times 200, uh, we'll put it over here. We've got 200 squared, and then it's this side and its opposite side, which we could call 200 times AD, right? The sum of the products of opposite sides is equal to the product of the diagonals, okay? So uh, that's how I memorize it. I don't memorize like letters and stuff like that. I think of it conceptually. Whenever you're remembering theorems, or a little key concepts, it's better to memorize it in terms of the idea rather than like, you know, the letter. Uh, so for example, law of cosines, you know, some people memorize it only as this. But what if the letters aren't A, B, and C in your problem? Then you have an issue. So you wanna memorize it conceptually rather than the letters, that's my point. So the sum of the products of opposite sides is equal to the product of the diagonals. Well, our diagonals are incidentally going to be equal, right? If I drew this one here, those two triangles would be congruent by side angle side. So if I can just find the length of BD and square it, I would have the product of the diagonal. So that was my next target. And another thing that I thought of too is uh, this right here, um, if I call this OBCD, um, that's like the most overweight quadrilateral there is. It's obesity. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, sorry about that. Um, anyhow, uh, OBCD is now a kite, right? It's a kite and all kites are what we call or what some people call an orthodiagonal orthodiagonal, um, all one word. Uh, I learned that word from AOPS. It just means the diagonals are perpendicular. So I know that this is 90 degrees and that reminds me that I have a theta here that I found a tangent for. So I would know that this length here uh, with this length is going to be a X root seven to X ratio, opposite over adjacent for the little right triangle right here. How do I know it's a kite? I know OB and OD are radii, they're equal. I know this is 200 and that's 200. That's what happens for a kite. So because of that, um, the diagonals are perpendicular and you're going to be able to apply that tangent here. All we have to do now to get this X root seven is Pythagorean. So that's not that hard. That's going to be X squared plus seven X squared equals 200 squared. I'm gonna write that as 200 times 200. Think of this as eight. I'm gonna divide by eight to get 25 times 200. I'm gonna square root that to get five times root two times uh, 10. And so you're going to get that X is equal to 50 root two, but we don't want X, we want X root seven. We'll multiply by root seven to get 50 root 14. We're gonna pop that over here. It's, this is what BD is, and it's one of the diagonals. We're just going to square that. Um, 50 root two, uh, why did that come out that way? Okay, so 50 root 14, okay, good. So that's not actually the diagonal, my bad. That's X, right? And so, or X root seven is 50 root 14, but there's two of them, right? Uh, again, one more property of kites. If you have a kite and these two are equal and these two are equal, when you draw this, these two triangles, this is an equal length to that as well. 
Again, these are just random properties of kites that I remember from Geo. You'll learn these in the Intro to Geo textbook by AOPS. I will link it in the description below. Um, you can also learn them in various places online or even your regular school textbook. Um, okay, so because these two pieces are equal, these two are not, by the way. It's the diagonal that connects here and here of the, the in between, I don't know, the two non-congruent sides. That's the one that's going to be bisected by the other diagonal. Okay, so I know that this is x root 7 and this is x root 7. And I can double this then to get 100 root 14. So BD, I'm running out of space here, BD is 100 root 14. Great. So now we're going to erase this and have some space. Uh, you will have 200 times 200 plus 200 AD is equal to, when I square the 100 root 14, I will get 100 times 100 times 14, because the root 14 is just 14. Uh, I think I just want to start by just, I don't know, dividing by stuff. So I'm going to divide by 100. If I divide by 100, that one goes away. I get a 2 AD. Uh, one of these becomes a 2, and now I have this. Uh, then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 2. And that's going to give me 200 plus AD is equal to 100 times 7. Don't get rid of the 100. It's so nice, right? So then just divide by the 14 by 2. Notice I'm not making a product out of these. Never multiply anything until you have to. That's kind of the general rule. Subtract 200. Don't forget that 200 is a 100 times 2, and this is 100 times 7. When you subtract, you get 100 times 5, and most of us would call that answer choice E. That is it, guys. Please let me know if you thought the sound and video quality were more matching. In the past, there was an issue, again, where it looked like my lips were moving, but the problem was my CPU on my laptop couldn't process the 60 frames per second 1080p on the webcam, and so I'm hoping that switching to my desktop for filming is going to solve that issue. If you guys can leave me a comment about how you think of that, what you thought of this solution, maybe how you're doing. You guys have a good one.